So we've done um, simple regression. We've done 3D multiple regression. Now we're going to do proper multiple regression. Proper multiple regression of the entire data set. So please get ready and let's start. Now, remember the multiple regression is you are regressing the quantity demanded. Look at the top there. On the price, which is beta 1 price, okay, beta 2, the complement price of the gene, beta 3, the income, the location, the occupation, and the religion, plus your return. I didn't write everything, plus your return. I have it all here. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to assume that we've not loaded the data into Excel. So this command will load the data in from Excel to R. And this second command, dim gin, will just show you uh, the dimensions of the data. Okay. The dimensions here means how many observations relative to variables. How many are the observations? How many are the independent variables? Okay. How many are the observations? How many are the, not just the independent variables, but plus the dependent variables? How many are the variables relative to the observation? That is what the dim gin will show you. Okay. So let's quickly do that in R and see what happens. So I go to my R and then I try this command. So let me just zoom in here and you will notice that in this command, and I type all of this, I did all of this. So you can do the same thing. Now this, these ones that I do here okay, is just for beautification to know the headings that you are dealing with. So I have the name of the data and I have the name. Now because I've already loaded the data, I can just look at the, this command, dimgin. Okay, dimgin. And when you do that, you come down here, you see that the dimension means you have 40 observations and seven variables seven variables because we are not considering please note we are not considering the levels of the dummy variable so if a dummy variable is having levels we are not considering the levels it's just the dummy at the top that we are considering okay now let's go and then showcase our multiple regression so command number 99 here will give us a multiple regression we are going to run the OLS, ordinary least squares, that includes both numerical and categorical data, or that include both um, numbers, strings, and that of dummies. The dependent variable is still quantity demanded, as you can see here, with a tilde sign followed by all the independent variables, including dummy variables. I'm running this command, and the next part here. The next part, summary gen multi. You see, the first one I called it what gen simple, which is a simple regression. Now I'm calling it gen multi, which is multiple regression. So I'm going to do that and do the summary, and the results will be showing down here. Watch. Beautiful. Now down here are your results. This will be your initial result you will get before later on you check all assumptions to be sure whether they are. This result is a powerful result. It's a real powerful result. I won't lie to you, so beautifully powerful result. We are going to make sense of this powerful result because until you make sense of it, you will not appreciate what is happening. Okay. So, let me show you what we've just done here. This is the same powerful results that you have on your slide. There are several things we can do about it several things okay but before i come to show you those several things there are a few things that we want to happen in fact we'll come back here and interpret this result but there are some few things you need to note once you get the results the the this result doesn't show the confidence interval and please note i told you that when you divide the estimate by the standard error that will give you the t statistic or the t value and when you read this T value on the table, you get the probability or the P value. Now, from the P value, of course, you can get a confidence interval. Okay, you can get that. But that confidence interval doesn't show here. And so you can use a command in R just to get a confidence interval if that's your interest. 
So there is a command that I have here in command number 100 here that you can just run to give you the confidence interval correct to two decimal places. Just the confidence interval like we did before for the simple regression. When you do that, it brings you to this level. So you can see that each independent variable has got the upper bound, which is an upper confidence interval, and the lower bound, which is a lower confidence. Yeah, that's what the person is looking for. All right. Again, for multiple regression, you can do your residual analysis. You can do your residual analysis. And we can easily come and do this. Now, how do you do the residual analysis? They are all there. So let me just first show you. Remember, we can do the ANOVA. Okay, so you can run the ANOVA and then show your residual analysis for this. And this will give you the ANOVA residual analysis. It's not too important, but the key one is this residuals. You remember in the simple regression, we create a residuals um, gene sample. Okay. Now, the residuals are the unexplained part of the regression. The residual is equal to the actual values minus the predicted values. I showed you there. It's the same thing here, but this one, the independent variables are many. Now, so we're going to get the residuals for all of them. This time for all of them, not only for P, but for all of them. Okay. And then we can also get a fitted for all of them. First, let's get the residuals for all of them. So once again, you can see that the residuals for every observation is here. Okay, the residuals, the unexplained part. This is a part where some are positive, some are negative, and we expect them to neutralize to zero. Another assumptions of God's mark. Okay. We can now get the predicted. One that we got, the kill cap. That's the fitted, the kill cap. Okay. Or the Y hat, the Y cap. So, and because we have the actual. So the actual that we have already in the data minus the actual dependent variable minus the predicted or fitted dependent variable. That is what will give you the residual. So let's do the fitted. And if you can remember, the first actual was 160. Now, it's fitted or it's predicted as 161.7. The second actual, if you can remember, was 200. It's fitted as 198. Okay, so this predicted. So we can see the gap, and the gap is what is shown at the top here, which is the residuals. Okay, so now I can easily create the mean for the residuals. Okay, let me create the mean for the residuals, and let's see. So I'm going to type mean bracket and then I'm going to just copy these residuals okay I'm just going to copy these residuals so that I will know the mean for the residual now if you can remember if you can remember the simple regression the expected value of the residual which is the mean of the residuals was zero the question is is this one going to be zero okay so I'm going to just commandeer this Okay, by running it and then see. Let's go down here. You can see okay, the expected value is what? Is zero. You can see at the end you have E minus one seven, which means that there are about 17 zeros before the four. So once again, the first assumption, this time on a multiple regression, where it says zero mean has been set. And of course, you can go ahead and plot the residuals. So, plot the entire regression by plotting the residuals against the fitted. We'll come back to this plot, but this is very important plot that we can do because we can use this plot to check other assumptions. Okay, we'll come back there and come and do this plot to make sense of all of the uh, important things that can happen in this.